Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, greetings from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Bangladesh warmly welcomes the opportunity to be part of this important event and co-facilitate this timely dialogue. Let me reiterate right at the beginning Bangladesh's commitment to and solidarity with the principles of the Rome Statute and renew our support and mandate for the work of the court. The time has come to have a conversation on how the mandate of the court can assist us in responding to climate change and widespread loss and damage and destruction of the environment, the most defining challenges of our times. Although Bangladesh has contributed least to global warming, it is one of the most vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. A one meter rise in sea level, for instance, will displace 40 million people from our coastal areas. We are already experiencing droughts, flooding, salinity intrusion, as well as extreme weather patterns impacting our lives and livelihoods. Food security is also an additional challenge that we face. Bangladesh is the ground zero for climate change and what we are experiencing today will be experienced by all other countries in the immediate future. It is not a question of if, but when. For us, climate change is indeed an existential challenge and this has been captured in the unanimously adopted parliamentary motion declaring a planetary emergency as we face one of the largest mass extinctions ever recorded. The Bangladesh constitution now has a new provision, Article 18A, under fundamental principles of state policy on protecting and improving the environment and preserving and safeguarding natural resources, biodiversity, wetlands, forests and wildlife for present and future citizens. As current chair of Climate Vulnerable Forum, Bangladesh, under the leadership of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, has been a powerful voice for the most vulnerable countries in the UNFCCC process and negotiations. Whilst we remain fully engaged and committed to this multilateral process, we are greatly concerned at the lack of urgency in the deliberations where consensus takes priority over bold and ambitious actions that we need to take. We do not have the luxury of time and must thus explore all potential avenues, including international criminal law, to supplement the ongoing discussions on climate change, as well as acting in harmony with nature, rather than continuing to wage war against it, as we have been doing. Expanding the scope of the Rome Statute to encompass such issues require careful thought and consideration in terms of legal and practical implications. The Interparliamentary Union, IPU, the Global Organization of National Parliaments, has in its 142nd Assembly in May of this year adopted a resolution calling on all its 179 member parliaments to, and I quote, reinforce criminal law to prevent and punish widespread, long-term and severe damage to the environment and to examine the possibility of recognizing the crime of ecocide to prevent the threats and conflicts related to climate disasters. Bangladesh Parliament is of course a party to this resolution and is already exploring how such a provision can be incorporated into our national and domestic laws. We commend the organizers of this event. This initiative will certainly enable us all to have better insights and understanding of the potential role of international criminal law in addressing fundamental issues not just for vulnerable and developing countries such as ours, but for the planet as a whole. Bangladesh calls on all leaders to engage on this critical issue of how we can ensure a sustainable and healthy future and the potential contribution of the Rome Statute in this very, very important process. The planet, our only home, and we all know there is no planet B, is already confronting an emergency. We must act and act now resolutely and decisively. If we fail to do so, we will have failed ourselves and future generations. I thank you.